In this video, we will try to consume functions what we have created last time. And this is going to be our flow. But before going into this one, first of all, we will try to consume it via Postman. And to consume it via Postman, so first of all, I will select the post endpoint over here. And after that, our function endpoint. In last video, we have seen how to retrieve the function endpoint. Let me just give you an overview. So to get the function URL, first of all, you have to go to your function app. So I will go to function app, what we have created last time. And after that, you will see your function listed down over here. You have to just click on this. And here you will see this JSON view. You have to click on JSON view. And at the bottom, you will see this invoke URL template. So I will just take this one and I will go to Postman. I will just select the post method. And after that, I will just paste it. So if I try to call it function like this without passing a function key, it will not give me any response. I will get this 401 unauthorized error because the when actually we were creating our function, we have selected the authorization as a function. So what we need to do, we have to go to the header and then we have to pass function key. And to pass the function key, we have to use this x functions key. And here actually we have to pass our function key. So how to get that function key? Again, actually you have to go to your function. There are several ways to retrieve the function key. First of all, you will see in your function app, there is app keys. So you can click on this and here you will see the master and the default one. And also if you want, like you can create a new host key. So once you click on new host key, it will give you another you can pass another name and then it will give you another value you can use that as well even if you take this value let me just copy it and just try to pass it in postman and now let's try to run it so now you can see because we haven't passed any name so it is giving us a proper response we i'm getting 200 okay and i'm able to get a response over here so instead of using uh, this key if i use a master key also so i have used this default one but let me use this master key also and let me pass it over here even in this case also we, we are going to get a response so let me pass it over here and let me send it again you can see like we are getting a response so these functions keys are at function app level suppose if we have created you know more than one function inside it then these keys are going to work for each and every functions because this is at function app level if you want to get it at function level then you can click on your function and here also we'll see function keys click on this one again you can create a new function key or you can use the default one so i'm just going to copy this and then i'm going to pass this key over here and i will try to send it and you can see like i'm able to get a response to get a proper response, you can pass some param over here. So I can pass Azure. It has converted the URL like this. So let me try to run this. And in this case, you can see we are getting a proper response. Hello Azure. This HTTP trigger function executed successfully. So this is how actually you can test your Azure function via Postman. Now the next part is how to write a code to consume this function. For that, we are going to follow this particular diagram. So here you can see our function app is already created. And this is HTTP triggered function. And to trigger this HTTP triggered function, we are using function keys. Now this function keys, we are going to store it in the key vault because these are the keys. So we are going to store it in the key vault and to access key vault, we are going to use the similar practice what we have used earlier. So we are going to create a service principle, which can connect our local code to the key vault, retrieve the function keys from there, and then we can trigger our function using that function key. Now, one more thing, what I wanted to highlight earlier, actually, we have created this service principle in Azure AD, Azure Active Directory, and it's still going to be similar steps. It's just that that Azure AD is now known as Microsoft Intra ID. So instead of creating service principle on Azure AD, we need to create it on Microsoft Intra ID and other steps and everything is going to be same. I will just give you a quick overview. How is it going to look like? But yeah, rest of the things are going to be same. So first of all, what exactly we need to do? We need to create a key vault. I have already created it. I will just go over it. If I go to my home one and here you can see I have already created a key vault. If you want to see how to create a key vault, then you can refer uh, the first video in this series where we have gone over how to create an access key vault. This key vault is created and here I have added a secret. Click on the secret and here you can see the secret is function key. Here in the secret value, I have just taken function keys and passed it over here. You can pass any of the keys. If you want to pass keys which we have seen on the function app level master and default that would also work and if you want to pass it at a function level then also like you can take that key and pass it over here it's going to work for each and every key the best practices would be as of now because we do 
have only one function under function app so it doesn't matter but uh, the best practices would be if you are creating a function then it would be better to use keys at a function level rather than using it at a function app level so you can pass your keys over here and you can name it i have just named it as a function key and once it is created then uh, our key vault would be ready and you know like how to create this one you can click on this generate here you can pass your secret value and you can pass your name i have just passed function key and the name over here then you can click on create and it will be created so it's a very simple step i have already covered it in first video of the series so you can go over it and uh, you can see how to create the function keys so once you have that function key created next part would be to create a service principle for that actually you can just search for microsoft entra id here rather than searching for azure id now you have to search for microsoft entra id and once you come to microsoft entra id then you have to do the app registration again we have gone over all these steps like how to create a service principle and here you can see i have created a service principle like this sp azure common demo 3006 and this service principle access i have uh, just authorized it to key vault so that using this service principle we can access key vault and that thing we can check over here you can go to im and after that you can click on add role assignment assign the value based on your requirement so here i have given key vault secret user so that it can read the secrets if you want to give like any other access considering your requirement the reader there is admin also based on that you can assign a particular role and uh, then in the next step i have just selected my service principle so here i have just searched for my service principle and just selected it now it has given the authorization to service principle and if you want to see like you know whether the access has been authorized or not so you can come over here in the role assignments and you can see what kind of role you have given myself i have given the key vault admin and for this particular service principle i have given key vault secret user role once this is in place it means we have we have covered this part of diagram we have also covered this part of diagram now i will just jump to our code you can see first of all actually i am passing some parameters because as you know if you are creating a service principle on microsoft entra id it's going to give us a client id tenant id and the secret and i'm just passing it in my environment file so here i have created dot env file here i am passing all these credentials and after that i am loading it using this load dot env so this would help me to load the keys from the environment file so here i have created dot env file and then i have defined all these values it will help me to you know retrieve all those values from there on top of that because we are using key vault to secure a function key so we have to pass our azure vault url same thing actually i have passed it over here azure vault url if you don't know how to get this then you can go to this uh, your key vault and you can go to overview and then here you can see the vault url you can just copy from here this is a key vault url and after that the function url which we have already seen how to retrieve it so these are the parameters which i'm passing in my environment file and after that i'm just retrieving it over here and storing it into in our you know local variables after that i have just defined another variable secret name and under this i am passing function key this function key i am passing because this is how i have created my secret so function key and under this i am storing my values you can provide whatever name you wish and after that i am just using the same code which we have seen in key vault in our key vault video so i just copy pasted everything from here and just put it into this file and here you can see first of all we are retrieving credentials from client secret credentials and here actually we are passing our vault url and credentials to get the value of our function key and once we have this particular variable created then we are using it to get a secret and here we are passing our secret so secret name is going to get passed as a function key and ultimately in secret key i am going to get a value and i can access this value by printing secret key dot value now the next part is where actually we have to call our function so in this one first of all as you can see in our postman here you can see actually we are passing some parameter so same parameter actually we have to pass it over there so in header we are passing x function key so again here also x function key to pass the secret value because from here we have got access to our secret to get the value we are using secret key dot value and the content type we are going to use the application in json so these are the two parameters we are passing in headers and after that because we also need to pass a name in our case so we are using this we have created this data variable and here actually we are passing this json now the next part is how to call our function url for that we are going to use request library and this is a native to python so here you can see i have imported it at the top 
in postman also we are using a post endpoint so similarly here we are using the post method of request and under that we are passing this function url this function url is coming from here which is coming from our environment file on top of this we also need to pass headers which we have created over here and the data we can pass it using this json so we have created the data over here and we can pass it directly from here to here we are storing everything in the response so what i am printing it out if the response or status code equal to 200 it means our function call is successful and I'm just printing a response suppose if the function call is failed then also I'm printing a response what kind of you know status code we are going to get and then printing a message so this is actually we can call our function now let's try to run this now you can see the function call is successful and we are also getting a proper response here now let's suppose if I don't pass any data now let's suppose if we don't pass any name so in this case, I should be able to get another response. And here you can see because we haven't passed any name, so it's asking to pass a name, which is as expected. So because our function is deployed on Azure platform and we are trying to call all these functions, so everything is going to, to get monitored uh, on Azure platform. So what you can do, you can go to your functions and then again, you can go to this monitor and you can see all your calls listed over here. So you can see like how many success calls you have got and how many failures call you have got. You can look for the timestamp and then you can check for the log by clicking on this. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching.